This is Marianne Martindale of the Alliance for a Better Utah, and welcome to this week's edition of the Better Utah Beat. In the popular novel 1984, author George Orwell tells the story of a dystopian society in the then future year 1984. Though Orwell's main target is the perils of a totalitarian state, equally important to Orwell's story is the ways in which people use and abuse history to make arguments about what is and is not true. For the political leaders of Orwell's Oceania, the name of the country in which Orwell's story takes place, history is adapted to the current needs of the state, irrespective of whether or not that history ever actually took place. We have always been at war with East Asia, goes the well-quoted saying. In other words, if it is more politically expedient to rewrite history to justify a current policy choice, then so be it. From gun ownership to gay marriage, we see this same problem of revising history to support our contemporary contentions operating in many of our debates. In fact, the debate over same-sex marriage has been an especially fertile area for people making claims about history in order to support contemporary acts of discrimination. It was only 120 years ago that the standard of marriage included one man and multiple wives. And that's just the history of the modern church. Primitive churches included not only polygamy, but concubines, celibacy, arranged marriages, etc. And it's worth noting that in the long history of marriage, women have been routinely made to bear the inequalities attendant to the institution. Women were once considered property that could be bartered for other property rights, from land to the cows grazing on it. We have always been at war with East Asia. Marriage has always been between one man and one woman. So much for a single undeviating standard. But it isn't only the churches who make these sorts of claims. School boards that make decisions about textbooks have been successfully commandeered by tea partiers in places like Texas, with disastrous results. The slave trade is now referred to innocuously as the triangle trade. Capitalism, an otherwise perfectly acceptable word in economic system, is now free enterprise system. The constitutional separation between church and state has been removed. Thomas Jefferson's founding father status has been rejected. There are some textbooks that require an equal mention of Republican and Democratic presidents, ignoring both issues of merit and that how the political parties are currently ideologically configured is a relatively recent phenomenon, dating only back to the civil rights era. But arguments about history resonate powerfully with contemporary audiences. If you can peg George Washington as a supporter of the unfettered right to bear arms, then you can pretty much trump any Facebook fight you've ever been in. The problem is that rarely are historical cases so clear-cut. And even though Orwellian claims about history might make good fodder for your Facebook wall, it's scary business when churches and textbook writers start to buy into it. This is Marianne Martindale with this week's edition of The Better Utah Beat. Have a great week, and remember, together, we can make a better Utah. For more information, visit betterutah.org.